The diagram below shows the different oxygen cylinder sizes and their capacity. Oxygen cylinders come in a variety of sizes and may differ slightly from supplier to supplier. Gas cylinders are labeled from A to H, with increasing volume as the letters of the alphabet proceeds. The newer nomenclature uses the letter M with numbers assigned to designate the size. The E-sized cylinders are the most commonly used size in medical settings. Sizes H or MM are used in central supply oxygen banks. Other important characteristics of cylinder sizes are its internal volume to hold water, its empty weight and the thickness of the cylinder body. A typical cylinder consists of body and valve. The body has body, shoulder, neck, and base. The valve has port, stem, pin index safety system, screw thread, pressure relief devices and conical depression. The curved upper part of the body is called shoulder which tapers in a neck. The neck ends in a tapered screw thread into which the valve is fitted. When the valve is screwed to cylinder neck, a fusible material called wood's metal is used to seal leaks between the valve and the cylinder. It melts if the cylinder is exposed to intense heat. Wood's metal is a mixture of bismuth, lead, tin, and cadmium. Cylinders have flat or concave base. The body of medical gas cylinders were traditionally constructed of steel. Now they are constructed of lightweight chrome molybdenum steel, aluminum or a composite such as aluminum wrapped in carbon fiber. Special cylinders made from aluminum are useful in MRI room. Composite cylinders are ultra-lightweight, extremely durable and can be filled with higher pressure. These are used by firefighters, paramedics, and emergency first responders. The valve is made of bronze or brass and is most fragile part of cylinder, therefore provided with a metal protection cap to protect it. It has port, stem, pressure relief devices, pin index safety system, conical depression and screw thread. The chemical formula of the particular gas is engraved on the valve. Cylinder are filled and discharged through the valve. The end of the valve is threaded to fit into the corresponding thread of the cylinder neck. Each valve has a stem, which is in close proximity to the seat. Together, they function as a door to the port, enabling the cylinder to be turned on and off. To ensure a reliable seal, the gland nut is meticulously tightened to compress the packing against the spindle. The stem can be manipulated for on-off control using its spindle, where either a hand wheel or a wrench can be employed. To open the medical cylinder, the spindle of the stem is turned anti-clockwise, causing the stem to move away from the seat, thereby allowing the gas to pass through the port. In contrast, to close the cylinder, the spindle of the stem is turned clockwise, effectively sealing it against the seat and closing the outlet. This controlled operation ensures the safe and precise regulation of gas flow from the cylinder. The port and the conical depression lie on opposite surfaces of each other. The port serves as an outlet for gas and fits into the nipple of the hanger yoke in the anesthesia machine. It is covered by a seal or washer called a bodock seal to achieve a tight fit with the nipple. The conical depression is situated on the opposite side of the port and is positioned above the pressure relief device. It is present only on cylinders designed for the anesthesia machine as it fits into the retaining screw of the hanger yoke. It must be distinguished from the pressure relief device, as attaching the screw to the pressure relief device can damage the pressure relief device. Pressure relief devices are installed on cylinders with the aim of venting the cylinder contents to the atmosphere in case the pressure within the cylinder reaches a dangerous level, often due to elevated temperatures or overfilling. There are two types of pressure relief devices, reclosing and non-reclosing. Reclosing pressure relief devices are spring-loaded mechanisms designed to automatically reclose and prevent the discharge of contents once normal pressure levels have been restored. 
Conversely, non-reclosing devices, as the name implies, do not reclose once the gas is discharged and pressure has normalized. These non-reclosing devices come in two primary variants, ruptured discs and fusible plugs. Some non-reclosing devices combine the use of both ruptured discs and fusible alloys to enhance their safety. At normal operational pressure in the cylinder, the spring within the pressure relief valve exerts a firm pressure that forces the seat against the approach channel, effectively closing off the discharge channel. This closed configuration ensures that the contents of the cylinder remain securely contained. However, when the pressure within the cylinder begins to rise, often due to external factors like high temperatures or overfilling, the flow of high-pressure air exerts force against the seat, compressing the spring and causing the seat to move away from the approach channel. This action opens up the discharge channel, thus enabling the excess gas to vent safely into the atmosphere. Once the pressure within the cylinder has been reduced to a safe level, typically after a sufficient quantity of gas has been vented, the spring's restorative force comes into play. It pushes the seat back into its original position, firmly closing the approach channel once more. Fusible plugs contain a fusible alloy housed within a brass or bronze retainer. A common fusible alloy material is tin, which has a melting point of 232 degrees Celsius. In the event that a cylinder is exposed to fire or other sources of excessive heat, the fusible plug melts, thereby releasing the cylinder's contents. A ruptured disc is made from either metallic or graphite foil and is precisely designed to burst at a predetermined overpressure threshold. These discs offer an instantaneous response to pressure surges, rupturing themselves and effectively venting excess pressure. It's important to note that both the rupture disc and the fusible plug do not have the ability to reconstitute themselves, which is why they are referred to as non-reclosing devices. The Pin Index Safety System, or PIS for short, is a mechanism used for attaching cylinders to regulators and anesthesia machine. It involves two precise holes in the cylinder valves that perfectly align with the two pins on the receiving yoke. When these pins and holes don't align, the cylinder's port won't fit snugly into the nipple of the hanger yoke. This system was devised to prevent the inadvertent placement of a cylinder containing the wrong medical gas onto the hanger yoke of an anesthesia machine that was designed for a different gas. The positioning of the holes utilizes an arc of a circle centered around the port, with seven hole positions equally spaced along it. Various combinations of these holes are chosen for different gases. The corresponding pins on the hanger yoke are precisely designed to fit perfectly into these holes. For example, oxygen is identified by the pin index of 2 and 5, nitrous oxide by 3 and 5, and medical air by 1 and 5. Entinox, on the other hand, is distinguished by having only the hole numbered 7, which aligns vertically beneath the center of the port. Cylinder valves are classified based on the shape or size and the sealing mechanism used in the valve. Depending on the size of the cylinder body, different shapes and sizes of valves are used. Smaller cylinders have pin index valves while larger cylinders have bull-nosed valves. Some of the valve have side spindle and wheel which closes and opens the valve outlet but, broadly they fall under pin index or bull-nose type. Integrated valves have built-in regulators. Based on the sealing mechanism, the valves are either packed or diaphragm type. In a packed valve, the stem is sealed by resilient packing, such as Teflon. These valves utilize compressed packing to create a seal around the valve spindle and body. To ensure an effective seal, the packing nut is tightened to compress the packing against the spindle. The primary advantage of using a packed valve is its ability to withstand higher pressures. However, over time, the packing may wear out and begin to leak. Additionally, 
these valves typically require two or three turns to fully open. Conversely, in a diaphragm valve, a diaphragm separates the upper and lower stems. The lower stem controls the gas flow by either shutting it off or allowing it to pass through the valve. The lower spindle assembly is enclosed in a spring, which pushes it away from the seat when the valve is opened. The upper spindle is threaded into the gland nut. The key advantage of using a diaphragm valve is that it can be opened with just half or three-fourths of a turn, making it more convenient. However, these valves are less suitable for handling higher pressures. Color codes are implemented to promote uniformity among manufacturers producing cylinders. Cylinder color coding serves as a vital secondary means of identification, ensuring that the correct product is selected for patient administration. The two primary color coding systems adopted globally are ISO, International Organization for Standardization, and the U.S. Color Coding System. According to ISO standards, oxygen cylinders are typically either white or feature a white shoulder with a black body. In the U.S. standard, oxygen cylinders are green. Nitrous oxide cylinders are light blue in both the ISO and U.S. systems. For ISO air cylinders, a distinctive zebra-striped pattern of black and white is employed, while in the U.S. standard, these cylinders are yellow. Carbon dioxide cylinders are designated as gray in both systems, while nitrogen cylinders are black, and helium cylinders are brown, consistent across both ISO and U.S. standards.